So you're on HRT, hopefully topical estradiol and oral micronized progesterone, and you're doing all the right things. You're optimizing your lifestyle, you're eating clean, it, maybe you've added some things like flaxseed or maca or genistein or you're sipping on soy milk because someone told you that it was good for your bone health. And then you hear this warning. Don't mix phytoestrogens with your hormones. They'll compete with the receptors and they'll block your HRT from working. I don't know. Is that true? Or is this just another piece of well-intended, hopefully, internet mythology? I actually recently saw this, and it was passed on to me by one of our Osteo Collective members, and this is why I love this group, because they're so good about doing the research, trying to find out what's good for them, and experimenting on nutrition, on supplements, and sometimes even pharmaceuticals, because they're so motivated and invested in improving the bone health. So what I want to do in this video is to get clear on this topic, and if you're using soy, genistein, maca, flaxseed, or flax oil, you're going to want to watch this. So first off, what are phytoestrogens? If you're not familiar with this word, these are plant-derived compounds. They're called also isoflavones from soy. They're lignans from flaxseed. There's compounds in maca. There's a lot of different compounds that do this, but they essentially have weak estrogen-like effects in the body. And I say weak because when you compare them to estradiol, the impact is not nearly as strong. They bind preferentially to the same receptor as estradiol, so the estrogen receptor beta receptor for the most part. But again, with much less potency than would actual estradiol and HRT. So I kind of consider them more like SERMs, and SERM stands for Selective Estrogen Receptor Modifier. And this is, this is a class of drugs like raloxifene, for example, if you've heard of that drug in the United States. These are drugs that can have a positive impact on bone, but the effects are tissue selective and context dependent. So really the question is, if you're on hormone therapy, do these plant estrogens interfere with your estradiol at the receptor level, or do they actually potentially even improve your bone while you're taking HRT? So to answer this question, let's start with the, the science behind this, the pharmacokinetics, if you wanna get technical. So if you look at studies on phytoestrogens like genistein, like soy isoflavones, like lignans from flaxseed, and you look at the studies that are showing the nutrition impact on uh, HRT, what you find is that there is no significant change in how estradiol is absorbed, metabolized, or circulated in the blood. And I've got a couple of citations here if you want to go check that out. So I want to get into the context of this. I want to go through a couple of the details. So let's start with metabolism. So phytoestrogens and estradiol are both processed by the same enzyme in the liver, usually. And that potentially could be a problem, but in the real world, in clinical doses, we really don't see that there's any meaningful interference there. So flaxseed, for example, if you look at the impact of estrogen metabolism, some people actually take it for this reason, where it might actually move the uh, metabolism of estrogen from the three primary breakdown products of estradiol to the one called 2-hydroxyestrone. And 2-hydroxy is thought to be less potent. It is a safer of the breakdown uh, products compared to 16 and 4-hydroxy. But ultimately, if you look Again, at these studies, it doesn't actually change estradiol levels. Now, maca, no issue here when it comes to the pharmacokinetics or the, the breakdown of estradiol, the, the uh, metabolism of estradiol. So then what about at the receptor level? I've heard people say, well, if you consume phytoestrogens, especially flax, because it has a lot of them, it's going to block the estrogen receptors and your HRT is not going to work. Well, there is some truth to this, meaning that the phytoestrogens do bind to the same receptors, but the nuance is this. If you are in a low estrogen environment, say a postmenopausal woman who is not taking HRT for whatever reason, then they actually can act as an estrogen agonist. That's actually the use case that we use these products like genistein, like maca. But when you're on estradiol, the higher affinity, higher potency of hormone will win out. The phytoestrogens can't compete in a meaningful way. Now, if you look at the studies, again, you do not see any clinical studies that show that these plant compounds can reduce the effectiveness or change the symptoms that a woman is experiencing if she's using hormones for um, for symptoms of menopause. And this has been studied in clinical trials on soy isoflavones, on flaxseed, on genistein, and even in high doses of these, super physiologic doses of these. None of them show a reduction in estradiol levels or your need to adjust HRT dose. And I have a reference for that as well. Another theory I've heard is that flaxseed can increase SHBG. 
And if you're not familiar with SHBG, this is one of these biomarkers that we measure when we really want to optimize hormones because it helps us to understand, again, what's happening at the cellular level. So this is a real theory. I like looking at things that can have an impact on SHBG because the higher your SHBG, the lower your free levels of hormones. True for testosterone, true for estradiol too. Now, if we look at the impact of flaxseed on SHBG, it's actually pretty minimal and it's really not consistent in the populations. So I don't know that I've even seen this clinically. We do measure SHBG and we have a fair number of patients on these products. I can't think of any clinical scenario where I've seen this consistently. So for me, I don't think that this is really going to translate to reduced free estradiol or reduced testosterone levels, free testosterone specifically. I don't think it's going to change the benefits of HRT. So then what about the things that many women are using HRT for? The symptoms of menopause. Well, if phytoestrogens were blocking estradiol, you would expect for women to feel worse. You would expect that when they are using these products, that their hot flashes would come back. Their other potential symptoms of menopause would come back. And again, the studies just simply don't show that. Estradiol still controls vasomotor symptoms, genitourinary syndrome of menopause, bone loss, all the big things that we talk about. And it doesn't matter if you're taking these things or not. So quick side note, if this kind of deep dive is helpful to you and you haven't come to our masterclass, please check out our masterclass. It's where we cover the top five mistakes that we see people make in their bone health journey. And believe me, we've seen thousands of these at this point. So look for that link in the description below or head to our website at osteocollective.com. All right, so are there exceptions to these rules? Absolutely. When we look at clinical data, of course, we're looking at a population at a whole. Do some women have a negative impact using these products? The answer is possibly. So when you dig into this, there are theories that say that some women with certain genotypes, literally the genetics, like ESR1, these polymorphisms can cause a woman to metabolize or respond differently to phytoestrogens. So maybe it's not the population at whole, maybe it's an individual person who is going to have a negative effect from these uh, phytoestrogens, these estrogen-like products. Now there's another group of women that produce a compound called Equal. This is a compound that comes from the digestion of phytoestrogen and phytoestrogen-like products in, into a, a compound called Equal. And Equal is known to have a positive impact on bone. In fact, there are supplements that try to mimic this pathway. Equal is not produced by everybody. It's produced by a certain microbiome makeup. And it could be that some women are going to use these precursors to Equal and actually have an impact, a beneficial impact by developing Equal. So theoretically, maybe there's a difference here. But really as a population, we need to consider things like these potentially as outliers. Now, if you're noticing side effects, if you're noticing benefits, then maybe you're in one of these groups. But right now we're not really at a place clinically where we can do genetic testing on this polymorphic and predict what it's going to do for you. Doing gut testing on your microbiome and then using that information to say, yes, these are these should or should not be used. I don't think we can have that type of clinical testing available to us and for me to confidently say that these are the, the impacts that you're going to see. Now, from a safety perspective, because ultimately this is the most important thing that I care about. When somebody says, should I be taking this supplement? I always want to ask first and foremost, is it safe? I don't think that there's any increased rates of estrogen related things that people worry about like breast cancer, endometrial changes, clotting events, heart attack, etc. I've never seen the phytoestrogens alone or in combination with HRT associated with any of these types of risks, okay? So here's the bottom line. If you want to add flaxseed, flax oil, maca, soy, genistein to your routine while on estradiol therapy, I think it's probably totally fine for the population at large. If you listen to me frequently, though, you know that I'm pretty critical of vegetable benefits and claims because I don't think that we can universally say that they're all beneficial. But I will say that there's clear evidence that these phytoestrogens like genistein can improve bone with or without HRT. Things like equal, prebiotic fiber that work through creation of short chain fatty acids in the gut with certain microbiome uh, makeup. These compounds don't block your hormone therapy. It doesn't reduce its effectiveness. It doesn't require dose adjustment according to the research. If you like it, if your body tolerates it or it thrives on it, it may even offer additional benefits from a bone perspective, a gut health perspective, cardiovascular health. I personally don't think you need to add them to optimize hormone regimens, but I don't think they're hurting you either.
So this is just, in my opinion, another case where nuance in real clinical data beat out the online fear mongering. So if you're using flaxseed, if you're using flax oil, if you're using genistein or maca, you tolerate them, your body likes them, you're seeing good results, I think it's totally fine. And this is what we tell our patients. It's fine to use these products as long as you feel good and we're seeing the results. We don't see any potential negatives. What I fear around this type of uh, information circulating on social media is that people will fear the products that they're taking. And unfortunately, the placebo effect works both ways. So remember that life should be about honoring your health, making memories, and aging with strength and grace. I hope you found this helpful. I'll see you in the next video.